You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Good night, it's time for the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys, telling you everything you need to know about the Saints, Pelicans, and a whole lot more. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys, and we have intense, entertaining, educated, and of course, enlightened sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q chiming in with you, and this is podcast 338 on the Sports Coma. That's right, episode 338. Thank you for joining us on the Sports Coma. A lot of serious happenings going down with our black and gold fam, and I want to cover them with y'all today in a magnificent fashion. So without further ado, on podcast 338 I'd like to thank all the new and established listeners of the show more and more subscribers joining up to the sports coma i like to thank all of our new and extended sports coma family for joining us as we talk nothing but serious black and gold talk so welcome aboard family let's get right into some of these really good discussions man A lot of stuff going on, man. A lot of stuff going on in Black and Gold Nation that we got to cover on today's show, 338. We're going to talk about, of course, the Saints are in discussions, man. This was an article, of course, came out of the Miami Herald originally that I was monitoring. I thought it was probably not real. <laughs> but, of course, it turned out to be real. Of course, New Orleans is now re- being reported by the New Orleans Advocate that the Saints are reportedly in the mix for defensive end pass rush specialist Robert Quinn, whom the Dolphins are looking to get rid of Robert Kent Quinn's contract. Of course, we're going to cover that today on the show, as well as other topics. Uh, we're going to give you some more information about Nick Easton, break down his contract, and also a scouting report on some of the people who might not know who this guy is. Like, who the hell is this guy replacing Max Unger, you know, how dare you step up and try to replace Max Unger? Anyway, we'll give you some information on Mr. Easton as he is the new Saints center. We'll also tell you about Jonathan Vilma, who chimed in on Drew Brees and what he thinks about Drew Brees, which probably is going to be the sports coma question of the day is, do you believe what Jonathan Vilma saying? We'll tell you about it later in the show. Also, we have Max Unger's comments on why he retired a couple of people. Uh, big up to the dread on YouTube chiming in and some more great sports coma family sharing some information. But also I was able to look up some information on Max Unger that I'm going to repeat with you today from a report dealing with him. And also Drew Brees chimed in with his thoughts on Max Unger as a teammate. We'll give you that information. And then, of course, there are other things going on in terms of Saints free agency. Where or where is Jared Cook, the tight end? who just disappeared into a black hole. Uh, I want all the sports con family to know that I'll be showing a tweet on our, I'm going to be shooting that tweet out to y'all. Y'all should be getting it momentarily if you haven't gotten it already. Uh, showing you a tweet from one of the reporters, what basically what Jared Cook said before he came to the visit, a day before he came to a visit with the New Orleans Saints, and the fact that we haven't heard anything from him. I'm going to shoot you a tweet. This is the only thing I got on Jared Cook. And, of course, you know, t- discussions about what's going on with, um, you know, with uh, Ziggy Ansah. It ain't, ain't a good sign if you're looking at Robert Quinn. Also, free agents, other Saints free agencies that are looking otherwhere. Our old free agents are looking elsewhere. Tommy Lee, Jerry Lewis has found a home. We'll talk to you about that. And, of course, Manti Teo. And more on today's episode of the Sports Coma. So without further ado, let's get right into the discussions on the coma, dealing with our initial start off story. Top story is, of course, the Saints reportedly are in the mix for Robert Quinn, uh, who the Dolphins 
or offering in a trade. Now, of course, just to give you a little information, Zig Anza, who the Saints brought in for a visit a few last week, was Friday. Jared Cook and Zig Anza, both guys, nothing has been heard from either one of those guys. And, of course, can't be too good of a thing if the Saints are now looking at Robert Quinn as a possible candidate to come in uh, with the Saints if Ziggy answers that. So something must be up with Ziggy. But of course, information dealing with Quinn is that this is according to NFL's Ian Rappaport, who reported this, is he's being hosted by the Cowboys on Tuesday, which was today. And of course, he's supposed to have discussions with the Saints. Now, of course, Quinn played eight seasons with the Rams and uh, St. Louis Rams and the Los Angeles Rams, making two Pro Bowls back in 2013, 2014 with the Dolphins. In 2008, he finished with six and a half sacks. Last week, uh, Alex Okafor, of course, agreed to a deal with the Chiefs. And the Saints then, of course, are attempting to replace him. They did bring some help in, big Malcolm Brown uh, and, and other talent that the Saints have brought in. But, of course, they're looking to add more production, more pass rushing to the team. Now, of course, the Saints, of course, have Davenport there who showed some flashes. Of course, he was dealing with injuries last year. Hopefully, he'll be fully healthy to come back and play. But the Saints, looking at a lot of stuff here, man. I mean, I got to say, man, Saints looking at a lot of stuff here. Now, they did sign Mario Edwards, who a lot of people say, well, he could be Okafor's replacement, but <clears throat> you can use Edwards as a defensive tackle or a pass rusher, and he gives you that ability. Of course, we know about the addition of Malcolm Brown, who will replace Tyler Davidson. But the Saints are looking ahead. Perhaps this is also something dealing with Sheldon Rankins, how really well and when Sheldon, maybe this will provide Sheldon a cushion to come back naturally and not rush him back. And, of course, the stuff with Daniel uh, David Onyemata is also stuff that we have to keep a watch on as well. But, anyway, that's some of the news dealing with the fact that the Saints are supposed to be in the discussions for him. Now, of course, we heard that the Dolphins' compensation for him could be a 2020 third round pick is what they're looking for and of course the owner of the Dolphins is so eager to trade Quinn and get his salary off the books which is around 12 million um, for this fellow that he's willing to help the upcoming team with his salary so very motivated seller of talent and the Saints looking to add more help to that defensive line and Quinn is a good pass rusher even though he has six and a half sacks but you add him there and of course we know Ziggy Ansah that's not a good sign if you're Ziggy Ansah um, that the Saints are looking at possibly looking at Quinn and only thing they can give up is a possible 2023rd or fourth round selections to acquire him but then again Dallas might not let him out of the building either but the Saints are in the discussions uh, with Robert Quinn and we'll know something as the week progresses now moving into other discussions about Nick Eason, the new starting center for the New Orleans Saints. Now, of course, Nick uh, agreed to a contract late Sunday, reported early Monday for a four year deal worth twenty four million. Now, he set out the entire twenty eighteen season with a neck injury. He had 17 career starts, 17, one, seven career starts, giving him more experience than the other centers currently on the roster. Of course, Cameron Tom and Will Clapp, those guys don't have no real start and experience they stepped in so of course he talked about joining the team and easton basically says and this is his words quote i'm on my visit down here i was just blown away with how knowledgeable and how enthusiastic those guys were and obviously obviously you have a well-established offense an unreal quarterback room they have down there it's just going to be a huge benefit to everybody else on the team and it's probably one of the most attractive parts about being a saint not to mention one of the most well-respected offensive lines in football it's pretty obvious why i choose why i chose to go down there and i'm fired up to be a part of it now you, that's one of the things about uh easton of course he was mentioned that he's is definitely fired up to be down here. Now, a scouting report on Nick Easton, for a lot of people don't know, 6'3", 300 pounds out of Harvard. So the guy is a pretty smart quarterback. The last guy I remember came out of Harvard that was an offensive lineman in center and also played for the Minnesota Vikings with big Matt Burke. And Matt Burke was a pro bowler for many years. I'm not saying Easton is on that level, but only time will tell. Now, this is the the uh, basically the scouting report for this guy. 
is that Easton plays with good body. Now, this is his strengths. He plays with good body control and balance, maintains desired posture through pass rep with wide base and sustains mirrored movement, takes good angles in space, looks for work and pass uh, protection, and will bear a helmet into the ribs of defensive tackles, plays with poise and confidence, and responds well to the blitz. Now, his weaknesses are squatty frame, which is, you know, he's, do you know he squats a little too much lack uh, length and will get stuck reaching for air when longer nose tackles get into him despite 29 bench reps to go at his pro day he won't generate movement when asked to drive block and of course he was undrafted and the bottom line is that he could become a, he's a solid pro his measurements tested as an athletic center eastern plays with intelligence composure and is technically technically sound but is a center only and might be regarded to looks from zone schemes what well, of course the things looking at Easton in that regard. But remember, you know, a good comment was made by another commenter about what they said about Larry Warford and what kind of player will Larry Warford is. Since Larry Warford came to the Saints, he's been stellar. Maybe we can have one of those situations with Nick Easton. Only time with 12. Tell, four years, $24 million uh, given up for Easton. Soon as Unger goes out, the Saints knew Unger, Unger Bunga was going out and then Nick Easton coming in the Saints replace him. So I got to give the Saints really brownie points for really doing what they're doing, man. Trying to keep the line intact, building a defensive line. They're really focusing on the lines, improving and empowering the lines. So let's give Nick Easton an opportunity before we start bashing his brains out because not too many Pro Bowl centers in the league. But hey, man. Maybe the Saints, the Saints all have some talented offensive coaches. They can get the best out of Nick Easton. Moving on to Nick Easton's predecessor, Max Unger, talking about Max Unger, uh, why he stepped out. And of course, he was quoted as saying, wasn't sure his body can make it through another year. I didn't know he had a myriad of injuries last year that he was dealing with. And he was pretty busted up. But, you know, when you feel like that, and these guys go through a hell of a lot then he knew that maybe it was time to, to to call it up. When your body won't respond, it's, it's time to hang it up. So that's even more of credit to what Drew Brees brings to the table. Well, this guy's, what, almost 40 years old, and he's still playing at a high level in the league. Absolutely amazing. But Max Unger, you know, his stuff became, his, his, his deal became um, knowledgeable over the weekend. So Saints weren't caught off guard. You know, Unger ain't the type of dude to just – throw that on you of course he said he was communicating to the organization they knew that's why they were in communication with nick easton now he said on monday conference call that he made the decision to stop playing within last month that the saints knew his plan before free agency got underway and the saints signed nick easton and see there you go now under his health concerns were what caused him to call it a career he said via phone uh, to nola.com that he's been dealing with lower body injuries for some time and he didn't think he would be able to hold up physically this year Quote, I'm retiring because I wasn't sure I could make it through another season, end quote, on the bunga. Now, of course, he came over in a trade for uh, Jimmy Graham for in a first round draft pick. And he made all he made his all pro first team and two pro bowls with Seattle, one pro bowl as a member of the Saints. And of course, Drew Brees to talk about Drew made a comment about on the bunga. He said that on Twitter, he put out a tweet on, on actually on Instagram saying I had the great honor of playing 62 games with Max Onga as my center and there and uh, there is no better teammate or leader I'm going to miss you brother and Drew Brees has a picture on Instagram of him and Onga as before they snapped the ball and of course Drew has a lot of respect for the man they, they were a terrific tandem of course there's a special relationship between the quarterback and the center of course Drew Brees We'll have to get that that uh, synergy, chemistry with uh, Nick Eason as he comes in. So big ups to and uh, Max Unger as he retires. Really appreciated having him. The Saint he'll probably go down as one of the best Saints uh, that we centers that we ever had down here. And Drew Brees recognizes that as well. Going into some other discussion as well is the fact that we have a few uh, ex Saints. Well, one ex Saint in particular. Uh, giving shots out to Drew Brees. Ex-Saint linebacker Jonathan Vilma, who was on that Super Bowl team, uh, says that Drew Brees has about another two or three years left. Now, Drew is 40, and his and, and Vilma said, I think Drew has, in my objective opinion, another two or three years left 
and he told TMZ. But if you ask Drew, he added he's got another 10 or 15 years left. Uh, end quote. Breeze is still effective on the field, finishing last year with about 3,900 yards with 32 touchdowns, only five interceptions. He was absolutely brilliant last year. Led the NFL with 115.7 per passer rating and broke his own NFL record with 74.4 completion percentage. He's played in 12 career Pro Bowl selections as well. And you, I don't go down the list of things that he does. Of course, the Saints hedge their bets with a backup with Bridgewater because you can only learn and get better. Sports coma question of the day to the sports family out there, the black and gold nation, who that nation is. Do y'all agree with Jonathan Vilma? Does Drew Brees have another two or three years left to play at a high level? That's the question. High level. He could play, but can he play at that high level? What do you think? Answer the questions. Put it in the comment section below. Do you agree with my dog, Jonathan Vilma? Let us know. Also, other Saints nudes to be taken, uh, taken back about us, of course. Tommy Lee Jerry Lewis is now packing his bags and headed to Detroit. He signed with the Detroit Lions after the Saints basically released him on Tuesday. Tommy Lee Lewis is no longer a saint. He is now gone. So whatever he had hanging over Sean Payton's head to stay here, he don't have it no more. He's gone. He totaled 34 games with the Saints over three years, locking about 20 catches for 252 yards and two touchdowns. And, of course, he'll forever be known with that controversial NOLA call with the guy just running him over. Uh, but he signed a deal to go and play with the Detroit Lions. So uh, we'll see how that works. He may hopefully um, he'll do a little bit better in terms of uh, kick return and, uh, than he did here. But we definitely need an upgrade over Tommy Lee. But big, big respect to Tommy Lee nonetheless and a more positive stuff to you, my friend. Moving on to the other Saints discussions, Man Ty Teo is a guy that is up. Uh, Saints, of course, signed Craig Robinson back. Man Ty Teo provided really good depth behind him, solid linebacker core that we presented. But Man Ty, of course, the Saints don't see him in the plans with Demario Davis stepping up, AJ Klein looking good, Alex Anzalone continually to get strong. Then they re signed Craig Robinson. Of course, the Saints. Don't really see a fit for the former Notre Dame star as he's looking, of course, to Ian Rappaport in the NFL uh, to go back to the West Coast and perhaps try to catch on with the Oakland Raiders who are trying to build their team up. Man, Ty Teo is obviously um, looking to get back to the West Coast with the Raiders. Now, outside of that, let's get into some of this other discussion about Robert Quinn Jr. and Anza. Uh, Ziggy Ansa and Jared Cook before we get out of here. Now, of course, there's no new news on Anza, nothing on Jared Cook, but I'm going to share with you guys. Look in the link in the community section of the page for this tweet I'm going to send to you guys, and I want y'all to comment on what Jared Cook says. Didn't hear anything from him. Usually it takes a couple of days. Been really quiet in the Saints building dealing with this whole matter dealing with Jared Cook really strange Robert Quinn do we need him of course Saints Nation school, hell yeah we need him y'all say said get on Ziggy Anza and Robert Quick and Quinn and throw him in there but can't have them both so uh, <laughs> we'll see what's going on the black and gold nation man they're trying to shoot they aiming for the stars on this one but anyway that'll do it for the show today thank y'all for joining us on the sports combo big q and the guys as always if you enjoy the show hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell go visit the links in the description section below donate if you like the show to help us empower the platform as well so for me and the crew here at the sports coma thank y'all for joining us today peace Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guys intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Embrace Pet Insurance is more than just pet insurance. Embrace Pet Insurance promises to provide genuine support and certainty when your pet needs it the most. 
with personalized accident and illness policies, compassionate customer care, 24-7 access to veterinary professionals, flexible wellness plans, timely claims processing, and online customer portals. Their values is what makes them embrace. So when selecting a pet insurance company as a partner in your pet's care, you deserve a company that has your pet's best interests at heart. Get top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Up to 90% back on bills at any vet, total protection, pet insurance, and wellness, and dependable claims payments. Get the top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Go to EmbracePetInsurance.com. That's EmbracePetInsurance.com. Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars ship directly to your home. Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Hit the link below and rep the black and gold today. Who that? Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrate nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think Namecheap.com. That's right, Namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. Follow the sports hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.